All right, so hopefully we've made it to part two here where we're going to start to look a little bit closer at how we can take these logical ideas or in terms of uh, some ideas about logical operations and tests that we might do uh, here in Python and how we can use references to start to make and take advantage of some of that. So let's go ahead and let's add a constant chop here into our network. Now we're going to go ahead and use chan1 and chan2 and let's give these some values. Uh, maybe we've got a value like 4 and a value like 10. And we'll start um, just by looking at some of the same things we started with, right? Let's see if we can just go ahead and use this existing uh, kind of piece of code that we already wrote, but instead substitute in some references to our chops uh, so that we can actually think about how changing these numbers might change what we print out. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit the contents of this bad boy. So in this case, now, uh, my int1, uh, we're going to point to our operator, constant1, and in constant1, we're going to point to the channel, chan1, and we're going to do the same thing here for our test integer, only we're going to point to chan2. Okay, now because we already wrote this, right, to go ahead and fill in these things, we don't have to change anything. We can just save this, and we should be able to just run this. Great, all right, so my int 1 is 5, and this number is less than 10. Uh-oh, let's double check what our, what's going on here. If my int 1 is greater than my test int, okay, this number is greater than my test int. Okay, this number is less than 10. Oh, and that's true. It is less than 10. Whew, we got it right. Thank goodness. Okay. So that, that's pretty bad. That's, you know, pretty swanky. Now, we might just verify, right? Let's go ahead and just verify what we've got here. So let's, let's just print out my int 1 because I'm suspicious that we might be wrong. Oh no, well it is 5. Mm. But what if it's not exactly 5? What if it was 4.856? Okay, now our value is actually 4.856, but we're seeing this value as 4, right, because of this uh, percentage sign D. Now, our test is still working the way that we want it to, but we're just not displaying this right. So we've got to come in here and change these. So let's go ahead and fix these. And now we're not dealing with an integer, we're really dealing with a value. So we should probably just uh, change some of this up a little bit. Oh my goodness, let's just go ahead and find all of the cases of my int 1. We'll find all of those. Oh, and they're all highlighted, so we can do, we can just, just change those to my val, ooh, my val one. Let me get rid of that business. All right, great. Now we also need to find all the cases of my test int. And let's find all those. And let's change those to my test val instead. Okay. Now let's see if we broke anything yet. Aha! Okay, this number is less than type channel notice. Oh dear, right? We've got this like crazy big long thing in here. What happened? Ah, well. Now we've got a reference that's showing up here. Mmm. Okay, what should we do? Well, let's actually go ahead um, and let's, in this case, when we're printing these things out, let's ask for these to be floats, right? So we can actually just go ahead and ask to convert this object that we've been dealing with into a floating point number instead of this like, crazy reference. That's not really what we want, right? We really want it to be treated as a float. And that's okay, we can do that. That's not hard. Now let's see what we got here. 
Aha! That's much better. Now we've got this big, long, crazy number here. We could, we could change that if we wanted to. We also see that we just get 10.0, right? We've actually turned it into a float, which is boom, what we want. So not bad, right? This is, this is pretty close to what we might want to think about making. And in fact, we could change this value maybe to three, right? And we could run this script again. And now we don't actually have to touch this script at all. We can only deal with these numbers up here. And we can see that our script is mm, behaving the way that we want it to. And that's pretty great. In fact, that's a lot of the way that we begin to actually use um, what's going on here in Touch Designer as a way of kind of uh, treating our scripting, right? Is that we access other things uh, and treat them as objects in their own right. Now, there's another circumstance that we might run into, uh, and that circumstance is where we have two of these things, right? So we might have a constant chop one. And then we might have a constant chop two. Now I might want to compare these two things together. Now there are a lot of ways that we can start to do that, right? Um, but let's go ahead and let's, you know, like we always do, let's start small and work our way up. So let's go ahead and define some of our variables first. So we're just going to go ahead and use my val. Actually, you know what, let's use this instead. We can give this a better name and maybe a, a more descriptive name, right? By saying chop one val one, right? And then we're also going to have, oops, a chop one val two. And we'll also have a chop two val one and a chop two val two. Okay. So if we wanted to, you know what, let's go ahead and just do this. Let's print out all of these values just so we can see them, right? We're gonna print out chop one val one. We're gonna copy this. We're just gonna uh, replace it several times, right? Because we've got two, chop two, chop two. All right, those are all our things. Now we're still missing our references. Okay, let's go ahead and put those in. So first things first, we've got constant one, nope, constant chop one. And in this puppy, we've got chan one, right? So that's constant chop one, chan one this thing as a reference to that, which means we also, we can just reuse that. We also happen to have Chan 2, right? And we'll do that two more times, because then both for 2, we've got Chan 1 and Chan 2. Okay. Now, none of this is gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and just comment out all of it for one hot second, just so we can see what happens when we print out all these values. All right, let's print those. Oh, we missed something here. Something is not subscriptable. Excellent. Okay, well, this happens to tell us it's line two. Lovely. So I got something wrong in line two. And let's check out what's in line two here. Chop one, chop one. Aha! Con. S T A. Constant. Spelling matters, kids. It matters a lot. All right, there are our values. And in fact, we could, you know, change these things to anything we want. We run this. Oops. Close. Let's run this, and we get all of our values, right? 0 0.38, 0 0.41, 0 0.3. Okay, now we can start to think about, well, how do we want to compare these things? I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of this, and we're going to write some stuff from scratch here, right? So uh, we might start with chop one. So if 
chop one, val one, chop one, val one, aha, uh -huh, is equal to chop two, val one, chop two, val one, like that. All right, then we're gonna say uh, these two values are equal. And in fact, we might uh, make that even better. We might say uh, chan one in chop one and two have equal values. Okay, I like that. What about if they're not? Okay, L if. So if chop one is, let's start with greater than, if uh, val, chop one val one is greater than chop two val one, then we could say chan one in chop one is greater than chan one in chop two. Okay, what about less than? If it's less than, then chan one in chop one is less than chan one in chop two. Okay, so what about the others, right? Ay ay ay, we've got a lot of lines here. Time to add some comments. So first things, the first thing we're doing is compare Let's see here, we're uh, com comparing, compare, uh, checking values for chop one and two in chan one. Eh, let's write that better. Chan one in chop one and two. Okay. Because then the next thing, set of things we're going to do is checking values for chan 2. Right? So we can see here that part of what our comments are good for is helping us to understand what's going on here in our code. Because you're going to start to write really long, complicated things. And giving yourself a couple breadcrumbs is going to be really super important. Okay, so now let's look at chop 2, val 1, and chop 2, val 2. No, nope, val one, that's still right. And then we want chop two, val one. Oh no, we got that wrong. Oof, heavens to Murgatroyd. Did we get that wrong? Hmm. Yes, because what we want to do is we want to compare val two. Whew, goodness gracious. Settle down, Reagan. You're out of control. Okay, now we're just comparing value two. Okay, so our first round of checks here, right? So this just deals with chan one in chop one and two. And our second round of checks deals with chan two in chop one and two. Let's run this and see what we get. Okay. So we see all our values. We see that chop one, chan one in chop one is less than chan one in chop two. Let's double check. Chan one is in fact less than chan two, chan one. Okay, and now the second thing we find out is that chan one in chop one, oh, we need to fix our, found a, a mistake. Aha, right? So our mistake here would be, this would be chan two. Chan 2, Chan 2, Chan 2. It doesn't even sound like a word anymore. It sounds like I'm speaking another language. All right. Let's try one more time. We know the first one's right, so now we just got to check here. Aha! Chan 2 in chop 1 is greater than Chan 2 in chop 2. 0.4 is, in fact, larger than 0 0.3. Okay. That's, that's pretty swanky. We have done an all right job with this particular chunk of a script. Now, what happens uh, if we want to do something maybe like a little bit different? 
Hmm. We can, right, because this uh, limits us in some respects. So we might think about taking advantage of the channel object uh, that's actually happening up here. Now, if we go ahead and we look at the Python help for our constant, okay, and if we uh, maybe look down here, we see this thing channels. Now, the channel class is a class in its own right, and there's a bunch of things that are associated with it. So, well, what does that what does that mean? Gosh, I don't know. Well, let's let's take a, a hot break, right? Let's go ahead and head and add another text stat. Oops. Oh. Uh, and let's do like a little bit of experimenting. So we're just gonna look up here at um, constant chop one chan one. That's where we're gonna start. So let's edit this and let's see what we might learn. All right, we're gonna edit the contents of this puppy. Now, if we bring back our web page, we see, okay, well, we've got this thing called index, we've got this thing called name, owner, vowels, okay, uh, great. Like, let's, let's figure out what that means. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna define some variables. And uh, let's make a note that this approach takes advantage, advantage of the chop of the channel. Whoa. All right. So my val1 in this case is going to be, we're going to use the same kind of idea for an expression. Constant one, chop one. Oops. It's just constant, chop one, right? This guy. Now, uh, instead of what we did before, right, now we're going to use dot chan. So we're going to use a channel class, and we're going to indicate that we want the index value of the chan that's at zero, right? Zero, one. If we had more, it would be zero, one, two, three, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. You can see here it's called name zero, value zero. Groovy, okay. Now, let's well, let's take a closer look at what we might get out of this. Pint, uh -huh, I wish. But we're gonna print out some things. The first thing we're gonna print out is um, my index value is, and let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and join this with a string that is my val1. Let's go ahead and just test that, just to see what that gives us. Oops, and not my index value, my value, excuse me, our index value is zero. Hello. All right, so we can see here that my value is 0 0.38. Okay, great. So, what, this doesn't seem like it's any better yet. Okay, well now let's try, uh, well, let's just write it from scratch, doesn't hurt for us to practice. Next I wanna know my index is, and we're gonna go ahead and pass in something like this, right? And this time around we're gonna use myval1.index to get our index. And we should see that that's zero. Sure is shooting, Tex. All right, what else? What else might we, might, might we want to know? We might want to know that um, my channel name, oh, can we get that? You better believe we can get that, Tiger, is myval1.name. Okay. Well, what does that look like? My channel name is Chan1, right? Chan1, Chan1. Okay, well, what else? We also happen to know that we could get out of here. My owner is 
And who's my owner? My owner is dot owner dot name. Okay. Let's see what we get there. Oh, my owner is constant chop one. And you might be scratching your head and say, Matt, that's great, but how did you know all that? Well, here we can see the members of our channel, right? The members of the channel class are index name owner vowels. And we're not, not going to worry about vowels this time around. When we talk about lists, we'll take a closer look at this. But we can see that we actually can get all of this information by using the channel class. Okay. So, uh, uh, so what, why, why do we care? Well, okay. Let's take this and let's run with it a little bit, right? Let's go ahead and edit our contents here. So we're going to go ahead and leave my, my vowel one. Um, let's copy this, right? Uh -huh. Because we're going to use it a couple more times. Because we're going to have a vowel two, a vowel three, a vowel four. Right, let's go ahead and do this business. So hopefully we can see here that this is chop one, chan one, chop one, chan two, right? Because I'm using their index value here and not their actual channel name, right? I'm just pointing up here to zero, one. And again, we can see that, zero, one, zero, one, right? I'm using their index as a way to get access to these bad boys. Okay. Now, let's print out a couple things. Okay, so if my vowel one happens to be exactly equal to my vowel three, right? In this case, we're comparing chop one and chop two. In that circumstance, let's go ahead and say, let's print out, holy smokes, tiger, these values are equal. Because evidently it's a prospector that is doing some Python programming. Okay, let's, let's test that and see what happens. So if this was one, and this was one, and we ran this, Holy smokes, tiger, these values are equal. Okay, so, so far this works. And that's pretty great. Well, elif, right? And let's, you know what? You wouldn't have a sense where we're going. So let's start by giving ourselves uh, some notes. Compare, uh, Chan one in chop one and two. Okay, L if my vowel one is greater than my vowel two. Now we're gonna, what are we gonna say? No, this time we're gonna say we're gonna print out my vowel, my vowel one wins. Great. And what else do we want to know? Well, I'd like to know um, that value is, right? And we can go ahead and use uh, what we've already written up here. We know how that works. That value happens to be this thing. All right. What else? Its index is percentage sign R. Okay. Print, what else? Its channel name is percentage sign R. Right, this is, uh, might feel like a little bit preposterous right now, but hopefully it's got a super sweet payoff. That's what we're hoping. All right, and last but not least, its owner is percentage sign R. Its owner isn't percentage sign R. That's just a song I'm singing 
to make the time go faster as we copy and paste all our code in here. Okay. Excellent. Now, what happens? Right, I'm just going to copy and paste that for less than. So, in that case, my val 2 wins. Ah, and you know what? Actually, it should be 3. Right? Because we're testing 1 and 3. Whew. Good catch. Good catch there. So, my val 3 wins. And we want 3, 3, 3, 3. Makes sense so far, hopefully. Okay, next up, we're going to compare Chan 2 and Chop 1 and 2. Now, we've already written all this, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy it, paste it. Now we just need to change out our variables. So now we're looking at 2 and 4. So if 2 is greater than 4, guess what? 4 wins. Then we're looking at val 4, val 4. If 2 is greater than 4, 2 wins. Ay ay ay. I'm off the rails, man. Crazy man. Crazy man with his code. 2's the winner. Okay, now we gotta change this to. Oh, that was right, less than four. In this case, four wins. Four, 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 four. Let's save it. We've just written 48 lines of code. Life's good. And let's run this. Ha, ah, all right. My value is one. All right, my index is zero. Okay, what are we just, but we didn't get uh, who won. Let's double check what we got here. Um, holy smokes, Tiger, these values are equal. Oh, right, okay. Oh, right, we left all this business in here. Heavens, shame on us. Look, we le left this big long chunk in here. We're gonna go ahead and just comment that out because we don't want that to actually run. Whew. Let's uh, evaluate that one more time. Holy smokes, these values are equal. Okay, great, and then my val two wins. That value is 0 0.4, its index is one, its channel name is chan two, and its owner is constant chop one. Okay. There we did it. Now, we could certainly push ourselves a little bit harder and we could make things a little bit more uh, complicated, right, if we wanted to but we certainly don't have to, right? Because this is an awful lot uh, of hassle is what it is, right? Like, look at all this shenanigan that we had to write in there. So we could think of a way that we could probably make that a little bit cleaner. But this is certainly one way that we can start to think very uh, kind of concisely about how we can use logic to compare channels and not only how we can use logic to compare channels, um, but how we can use the channel class as a way to get into some of that information, which is even more powerful, right? Okay, so that's like a little bit of logic. That should be enough to make you a little bit hungry and want to kind of pull apart some more examples. Uh, it should make you, give you enough information to start to be dangerous. And that's really what we're after, is kind of giving you the fundamental kind of ingredients to be able to start pulling things apart and digging in on your own. All right. Thanks for playing along, everybody. We'll be talking about lists next and data structures and how swanky and fun those bad boys are. See you on the flip side.